Hello guys. Um, I hope you're all doing well, staying safe and healthy and just absorbing all of this um, information that's coming in. Um, life is changing and I am open to change. I've always been somebody who's, who loves to continue to learn. Um, and I think that, I think it's wonderful that everyone is sort of opening up their minds and opening up their hearts and continuing to learn in different ways. Um, today, this is a Q&A, so I'm going to spend the next couple minutes answering the questions that you guys have. So I'm going to keep an eye on the bottom of the screen and I'm also going to check the questions that you guys already submitted and start answering those one by one. I know I got a whole bunch of them before, so I'll do my best to get to all of them. And um, Dory, if you are there, if I miss a question that's coming in, just like keep sending it until I eventually see it. Um, hi guys, I love that you're all joining. I'm coming and I'm gonna look and see about all these different questions that are coming in. This is so awesome, I love this. This is the greatest new technology and new aspect of Instagram. You guys can send your questions in advance and then I can read them live and put them on the screen. Um, okay, so let's see here. Um, okay, uh, how to get glowing, let's put that one on the screen, how to get glowing skin at home, can't get office procedures now. So um, actually a lot of people are back in the office, um, I am, it is a different experience, but it is so good to be back at work and see my patients who are like my family, um, and so many of them are, have been just patients for so many years that we've sort of like grown up together. Um, so it, it's just good to be back there and doing procedures. You know, we just, we just have to do them in a very, very careful way. Um, so, uh, you know, the person who sent this, I know these questions are posted anonymously, so um, I don't want to out you, but um, you can probably call up your dermatologist and see if they are back in business. Um, and, you know, I know that the wait times are pretty long right now um, because there's a tremendous demand, but you can ask. Um, if you still, you know, are waiting and can't get in, there are so many things that you can do at home um, that can keep your skin glowing and healthy for sure. Um, so there are products that I consider the workhorses, you know, the, the ingredients that really dramatically change the skin um, and they can be bought over the counter. So one of them is retinol. So retinol is a form of vitamin A and it just has beautiful studies behind it. The prescription strength alternative is considered tretinoin or Retin-A or Tazerac. Those are things that you can get through a prescription. And by the way, if you're not going to see your doctor, you can always ask for prescription strength, you know, for prescription to be sent in through telemedicine or tel teledermatology if the doctor is, is participating in that. Um, but most of my patients actually do better without the prescription strength because uh, the prescription strength can tend to be very, very irritating. Um, so they can really sort of dry out your skin and sometimes you're trading one problem for another. You know, you're trying to fight uh, dull skin that may develop a little bit of a cigarette paper or crepey texture and you, you want to rejuvenate that skin but you end up with dry inflamed eczema patches and they're stinging and burning and you say, oh my gosh, this is worse than before. And that's because sometimes it's just too strong, right? So I say to start with a retinol. Um, and, and start less is more, guys. If you find a retinol cream or a retinol serum, you can just use a little bit, dab it all over the face, take another pea-sized amount or one pump, dab it all over the neck, and then do a third one with your chest. You can even do the tops of your hands. I have so many patients who've been treating their face so carefully for years, and then one day they wake up and they say, my face doesn't match <laughs> my neck or my chest, and they wish that they had started treating all of those areas like they were one cosmetic unit. So I'm telling you now, if you're gonna start using a retinol, which is one of my very, very favorite ingredients, it has beautiful studies behind it for tightening, firming, smoothing, brightening, helping with fine lines, it even fights acne. Um, it's just an amazing and powerful ingredient, but a gentle retinol that's well formulated will not create too much irritation most of the time you can only really get away with using it once or twice a week. So, you know, do your, your retinol maybe on a Monday night and then again on a Thursday night 
and see how you do with that and give it about two weeks. When people have a reaction to a skincare ingredient, most of the time it doesn't happen right away. So whether it's an allergy or an irritation, it can actually take up to two weeks to see that result. So one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they get excited about starting a new skincare routine and they'll, they'll introduce three or four new products at once, they'll get a reaction and they don't know what's causing it. So I always say, good rule of thumb, start introducing one new product at a time, give your skin a little bit of chance to adjust to it, and then you can always introduce a second one. But specifically with retinol, it's just an ingredient you just can't use every night. Most people can't. So especially if you have sensitive skin, and so many of my patients have sensitive skin, I have sensitive skin. So I only use my retinol once or twice a week, and I would not live without it. It is my favorite, favorite skincare ingredient out there, but less is more. You really wanna ease in, and you wanna go really, really gentle, and most retinols you wanna use in the evening because they can be broken down by sunlight and sometimes cause free radicals to develop or they just don't work if they're exposed to sunlight. So you don't, mo some of them are photostable, but for the most part, retinol should be used in the evening. So that's one thing you can do at home if you wanna get beautiful glowing skin. Another thing is looking for ingredients like glycolic acid. Glycolic acid is a form of alpha hydroxy acid that's very small penetrates into the skin. We actually have beautiful studies showing that it not only exfoliates the skin, meaning that it speeds skin cell turnover, but it lightens up dark spots. And if you use it consistently over time, it can actually stimulate collagen production. Um, peptides, there are some peptides that are also shown to stimulate collagen production. Um, no matter what you're using at night, as far as you know, sort of undoing damage, in the morning you wanna protect. So how can you protect? You protect using antioxidants. So things like a vitamin C serum, or a serum with resveratrol, or a serum with green tea. Any kind of antioxidants are huge. And then of course, sunscreen, sun protection is also huge. So as far as doing things at home, those are some of my favorites. Um, if you have under eye bags, and you tend to carry a lot of edema underneath the eyes, you can use a jade roller. Um, so for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a tool and you just remove it back and forth and no, it's not going to have long-term effects on your skin. It's not going to detox your skin. Our skin is not good at getting rid of toxins. Our kidney and our liver are really good at getting rid of toxins. Our skin is not going to do that for you. So, you know, I think there's a lot of sort of voodoo surrounding things like jade rollers. What do they do? they stimulate circulation. It's almost like massaging your face um, and that's good for you. You know, when I treat my patients with uh, something called Sculptra, they do a Sculptra massage, five minutes, five times a day for five days. And I can't tell you how many of my patients will do that massage. And then afterwards they'll say to me, like, I know I was only supposed to do it for five days, but I now massage my face the way you taught me every single night because I think that the massage itself is helping my skin. Like the Sculptra tightened and lifted, yes, but the massage helps with lymphatic drainage, it helps with um, the under eye edema or that fluid that people tend to get underneath their eyes. Um, and you know, especially people who, who tend to carry a little bit of excess fluid in the morning, you know, massage and jade rolling can be very, very helpful. So those are things that I recommend doing at home uh, if you can't get in to see your dermatologist. And of course, if you have questions about diet, because that's a huge part, diet, exercise, stress, um, if you go to my website and put in your email address, you'll get my free ebook for my boot camp, and that will go through all the things that you can be doing right now at home that will transform your skin from the inside out and the outside in. They're simple things, they're not expensive, it's not challenging, it's not hard, you just have to know what to do. Um, all right, so on to the next question. Let me see if I can bring that up. Hi guys, I'm seeing, I'm recognizing so many names. Okay, so, all right. Um, how to increase collagen. Okay, so collagen is such a buzzword because we need it. Um, it's one of the most prevalent and ubiquitous proteins throughout our body, but it's really important in our skin. It keeps our skin tight and firm. When we start to lose collagen, about in our late 20s, we start to uh, lose more than we're able to make and replace. So over the years, you'll find that your skin is just less firm, 
Um, one thing that people don't even relate to collagen is the size of their pores. So if you think about a pore is like a basket. So imagine that your collagen is like this basket weave. As we age, the basket weave gets looser and looser because our collagen fi fibers get sparser and sparser. And then you start to see the pores. And if you can stimulate collagen production, I do it in the office with something called Fraxel or the ND Med Intensive, which is a radio frequency microneedling device, or I do vampire facials, microneedling plus PRP or chemical peels, things like that to stimulate collagen. At home, you can use retinol, you can use peptides, there's, you can use alpha hydroxy acid like glycolic acid, but the collagen weave gets tighter when you produce more collagen and then your pores look smaller. So a lot of people don't realize that pores have a lot to do with collagen. Um, so collagen is so important. So what can we do when it comes to increasing collagen? So you can do procedures in the office like I just mentioned. So anytime that I inject Sculptra, Sculptra actually stimulates your own fibroblasts to create more collagen. It takes three to four months to see the result, so it's sort of a slow and steady, but it's your collagen. So it lasts a long time and it really has an incredible lifting scaffolding effect to the skin. Um, other procedures that I do that stimulate collagen production, microneedling plus PRP, so that's also called the vampire facial. We actually numb your skin for about 30 minutes and then wipe that off with HibaCleanse. I use um, very antiseptic techniques. And then I take your blood, spin it down in a centrifuge, and separate out the plasma, which is very rich in growth factors, paint that on the skin. And then I use a little pen-like device that has tiny surgical needles that go in and out of the skin. It sounds terrible. It's not terrible. It's kind of like an uncomfortable tickle. Um, honestly, my patients, believe me, I'm the first person to offer people laughing gas and Valium and Percocet if they want it. Microneedling plus PRP or a vampire facial, patients just kind of like talk through it. They're like, this is it, this is the whole thing. Um, the only time you need to go really, really deep with a vampire facial is if you have acne scars or really deep wrinkles or what we call rhydids. Um, for most of my patients who are looking to just keep the skin firm and tight and just boost that collagen production, and have that real prophylactic benefit, you are talking about being a little pink for a day, and then you have to wear mineral makeup on day two, three, and four, and then you're good. So it's it's really not a lot of downtime. You don't have you don't need to go to YouTube and see those bloody gory videos and think, oh my god, that's gonna be my micro my my micro needling, my vampire facial. You know, a lot of my patients um, are on air personalities and will do the vampire facial and they'll be on live TV that night. Um, and that is a great way to stimulate collagen. Fraxel lasers are an amazing way to stimulate collagen and radio frequency microneedling devices are also an amazing way to stimulate collagen. Those are really uncomfortable. So I highly recommend that if you're getting that done and they go by different brand names, the one that I use is the ND Med Intensive, you wanna ask your dermatologist for some Pronox, which is a blend of nitrous oxide and oxygen. It's laughing gas, it's very safe, it's even being used in labor and delivery. Within five minutes, it's completely out of your system. Within 10 minutes, it's safe to drive. Um, so I'm using a ton of that in my office and my patients love it. Sometimes I have to pry it out of their hands at the end of the procedure, um, which is great. I just happen to have this next to me. I actually didn't go through the questions before the live, but I was gonna share with you guys some of the products that I'm testing right now. And since we're on the subject of collagen, um, this is a Mind Body Green grass-fed collagen that I just got. Um, it's chocolate flavored. Um, and I, I really like the ingredients. I really like uh, the way that it was formulated. Um, before I recommend anything, I have to test it for a prolonged period of time, especially collagen. So I can't recommend it yet until I test it, but I am testing it now, so I will keep you guys posted. But I think that taking a collagen supplement is something that you can consider if you wanna boost the collagen in your skin. Again, if you take it by mouth, it's not like it's like right to your wrinkle, right? It doesn't work that way. Um, but there are studies showing that if you consistently take collagen powder or supplements over time, it can actually boost hydration in the skin and uh, stimulate your body's collagen in your skin. So it's not like the collagen is somehow staying intact 
going through your intestinal tracts, through your bloodstream and making its way to the skin. It's being broken down into these small things called dipeptides and tripeptides, which are little links of amino acids, little chains of amino acids. And those act like cellular signals. They basically go to your skin and they say, wake up, make your own collagen. So then it in turn stimulates your own collagen production so that your skin will get more firm and more tight. So that's how the collagen supplements work. The problem with collagen supplements is that supplements are just not heavily regulated. You know, it's one of those things that it's sort of self-regulated. So you're really hoping that the person, the brand that is formulating this product knows their suppliers, knows their supply chain, has full transparency, is getting the best quality ingredients without contaminants, without heavy metal contaminants, you know, and, and that is, that's really important. Like this one, you know, they say that it's grass fed. Why is grass fed important when it comes to bovine collagen? Because the source of the collagen is important, right? So if you're going to be getting marine collagen, you want it to be wild caught. You don't want it to be exposed to a lot of pesticides, antibiotics, things like that. So, you know, so collagen is only as good as where it's coming from. And so there has to be, you know, that, that, that trust um, with the person who's producing the collagen and transparency is key. You know, if that brand wants to earn your trust, they should very clearly tell you on their labeling or on their website where all of their ingredients are coming from. And once you read that information, if you feel good about it, then you can take it. Um, so I do feel good about this one. Um, I haven't personally taken it for long enough to tell you if I see a difference in my skin, but this is one I'm not afraid of and I think it was actually very carefully done. Um, so if you're thinking about other ways to boost your collagen, especially if you're not getting, if you're not a big sort of meat eater or you don't have a lot of, um, of different protein in your diet, um, you know, whether that's fish, chicken, um, beef, um, it's hard if you're vegan to get a lot of protein in your diet. So if you're looking to supplement, you know, that's definitely something you can sit, consider for boosting the collagen in your skin. And of course, you know, the topical ingredients we spoke about are also good ways to boost the collagen. Hello everybody. Okay, so let me see. Oh, we've got live questions and we have questions here. So let me see uh, if we can answer some more of the questions that were sent in. Um, interested in becoming a dermatologist. Any recommendation or advice? Ah! So I love that question because I'm in the best field ever. Um, I, I couldn't be happier with my field. Um, so advice, you know, the thing with becoming a dermatologist is it is, oh, neck wrinkles. I will totally get to that in a second. Um, it's very, very competitive. Uh, I think that it's probably the most competitive field to match in coming out of dermatology, coming out of medical school, excuse me. Um, so I think the biggest challenge is really succeeding and just acing everything, right, without becoming crazy <laughs> and without becoming so competitive that you lose that that team approach and that collaborative spirit and you know i think that that's the hardest thing about becoming a dermatologist but um you know i think that if you're interested i think the best thing to do is try to shadow somebody uh, there's so many different types of dermatology out there you know there's um pediatric dermatologists who treat kids there's dermatologists who focus primarily on body exams and pigmented lesions and detecting skin cancer there are dermatologists who specialize in something called Mohs surgery or skin cancer surgery um, and they love using their hands there's cosmetic dermatologists you know who primarily like to inject like to sculpt like to use lasers um, even within cosmetic dermatology there's sort of the laser camp the people who love physics and lights and energy and then there's the injectable camp and the people who just love playing with a syringe and, and sort of like sculpting and molding, you know, the beautiful portrait and face that they have in front of them. So, um, but then there, there's just so many different areas. There's, there's treating, there's using light therapy to treat things like vitiligo and psoriasis. There's biologics. There's, there's, it's such an incredible field with so many different aspects. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I was one of those people who I went through medical school and I was every time I did a rotation, I went home uh, to my husband and we got married very young and I would, I would say to him like, I love this, I want to be a gynecologist, I love this, I want to be, you know, a, a, a colorectal surgeon, I love this, I want to be an ophthalmologist and 
you know, I just felt, I could see myself doing all those things. And I feel like with Derm, it's just so broad that you can sort of go into any of those fields. Um, deep neck wrinkles. So somebody asked me about that. So if you have, so there's a bunch of different things that happen in the neck. So if you have sort of what I call necklace lines, which are these lateral lines across here, um, you can use tiny little uh, droplets of Botox or Dysport across the neck. That can actually be very helpful. Um, and you can do those every four to six months or so. Um, and then also the um, horizontal creases, you can fill them with a filler called Bellatero, but it looks like a cat scratched you um, across the neck. Uh, just for that day primarily, but just be aware there's a little downtime with that procedure. Um, also doing lasers and resurfacing procedures for the neck, you know, can be great. Um, Ultherapy is a treatment that uh, basically treats the fascia, which is the deep layer. Um, and it, it creates these little um, focused ultrasound uh, areas of injury along the fascia and it, it basically contracts. So right away you get a little tightening. You'll see that that um, that immediate sort of tightening effect and then it stimulates more collagen production over the next three to six months. Um, and that'll further tighten up the neck. And then that's more of a deeper tightening and then more of a superficial tightening you can achieve with the Fraxel laser. So if you have brown spots, something called poikiloderma is when you have dark uh, spots sort of brown and red, especially on the lateral neck because the chin creates a shadow. So people tend to not get it right here, but you can get that hyperpigmentation along the lateral neck. Fraxel is great for that. If you just have cigarette paper, you know, you don't really have the dark spots, then ask about the radio frequency microneedling devices. Those are really great for texture for the neck, but the neck is challenging. It's, um, it's, it's hard. I mean, I love you so much. Um, <laughs> so it's hard with the neck with, um, seeing dramatic results quickly. It's one of those areas where, you know, it's like a money pit guys. Like yeah, my patients who are happy with their necks have spent a tremendous amount of money and a tremendous amount of time in my office. And I'm just, I tell that pe to people up front right from the bat, you know, it's one of those things from the bat. Is that even a phrase? Probably not. Um, right off the bat. Yay. Nailed it. Um, so it, it does take a while to actually see the results in the neck. So you, you got to really care um, and you got to you gotta really be in it for the long term. I saw a question about my practice and taking new patients. So my practice has been capped um, for a while now, for over a year. I just haven't been able to accommodate any new patients um, because my wait list is so long and I have such good relationships with my existing patients that I wanted them to be able to get to see me within you know, at least a couple of months and not have to wait forever. Um, but there are so many good dermatologists out there and it's really looking for somebody who, you know, I, there's no dumb dermatologist, right? I feel like dermatology is such a competitive field to get into to begin with, um, that you're, you know, you, you, they're all smart. It's just that cosmetic dermatology really has to do with that hand-eye coordination and that passion for the artistic side of it. Um, so that, that sort of knowing the proportions, knowing the ratios, caring about them, uh, studying anatomy, going to cadaver courses to sort of understand like where is the nerve, where is the muscle. If I inject here, is that going to create a vector that's going to lift up the marionette and really tighten that area of the face. So, you know, that's, that's where you sort of have to go by word of mouth or referrals. Ideally you see somebody, you love the way that they look and you say like, who's your dermatologist? <laughs> that's the best way of finding a good dermatologist. Um, all right, let me see. We've only got a couple of minutes here and I have so many questions. Um, okay. So let me see. Oh my gosh. I'm scrolling through all of these to see something that I haven't covered. Um, Okay, so does retinol make you more sensitive to the sun? Um, so, so that's actually a controversial thing. We know that a lot of the retinoids um, break down in the sun, and there have been some studies showing that certain types of retinol um, can create more reactive oxygen species or free radicals when exposed to the sun. So um, I, I, I wouldn't be afraid of using a retinol during the summer. I would just use it at night, and I would just dial it down a little bit. You know, So if you're used to using it like every third night, go to every fourth night. If you're used to using it twice a week, go to once a week, but you know, it, it's not, it's something, I definitely don't tell people like, oh, during the summer, don't use your retinol. Cause that's, you know, that's ridiculous. How could I live without my retinol? That's crazy talk. All right, let's see what's going on here. Um, ooh, the study concluded, oh my gosh, there's so many questions. I'm not gonna get to all these questions. Um, the study concluded there is a link between milk and acne. Does that include yogurt? So the study did not look, I, from what I read, it, I don't believe it looked at yogurt. Uh, it primarily was looking at dairy milk. 
And so, and from all the prior studies that I have read on dairy and the skin, it is specifically attributed to dairy milk and skim milk in particular seems to have a stronger association with inflammation in the skin than with whole milk or low fat milk. Um, we believe it's because of the higher concentration of the whey and the casein, which are the milk proteins, which we think for, when you ingest them, we think that they're inflammatory uh, to the skin and they trigger a cascade that can potentially create more acne in the skin, which is why I also tell my acne patients to avoid whey protein supplements or whey powders um, because those, uh, you, if you want to have like a, a protein supplement, you can have you know, either collagen, like I spoke about earlier, you know, or you can have like a plant-based protein powder instead. Um, but I don't recommend whey protein because of that link that we've seen again and again with the skim milk. I highly recommend yogurt um, for the skin and for the gut and for the microbiome for so many reasons. When um, So yogurt in the studies that I've seen, including this study, I don't believe that there was any link between yogurt and the skin, and at least not one that they called out in their statistically significant results. Um, yogurt is made with probiotics and the probiotics seem to have such a good benefit on the skin um, that, that it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue. Also, the process of fermentation actually dials down the IGF-1, insulin growth factor one, which is the trigger for acne, fourfold to the point that it, it doesn't seem to have that same inflammatory effect on the skin. So absolutely enjoy your yogurt. Just be careful because we know that foods with a high glycemic index or that are high in sugar can be inflammatory for the skin. So just turn around your yogurt and look for the grams of sugar. And you wanna to try to keep the grams of sugar low. So, you know, under eight grams, you know, ideally, um, if you're gonna be having some kind of yogurt. I tell my patients to try to keep their grams, their added grams of sugars to less than 30 grams per day in general. Um, so I know that some of the yogurts are flavored and they do have some grams of sugar um, and it's okay in moderation, just be careful and be mindful of that sugar. Um, question about eye creams. I'm actually testing a whole bunch of eye creams right now, so I will let you guys know. Um, so this is one by Juice Beauty, this is one by Suzanne Kaufman. Um, so I, oh, this and this is really cool. So I'm testing this one, this is a CBD infused under eye mask, which looks kind of cool. So um, I'm always open to testing new things. So I'll keep you guys posted on eye stuff. And I think I have like four more minutes here. So let me see. Hey, little turkey, how you doing, baby? Um, best option for freckle prone skin. Oh my gosh, don't get rid of your freckles. So my mother always said, mom, are you there? Give me like a little high if you're there. My mom's like my, she's she's my my go-to when it comes to Instagram Live. She never misses one. <laughs> I love you, mom. Um, she always said a face without freckles is like a night without stars. Um, so yes, freckles do show that you have had some sun exposure. There's a genetic, for Dory, there you are. Hi, beautiful girl. My freckle-faced beautiful sister, Doran, who also works with me and is the best part of my work day. Hey, want to say hello, little turkey? Even my little my little goose, who actually was just swimming in the rain, has a bunch of little freckles right over her little nose. Um, so freckles are a sign that you've had some sun exposure. So you don't want to, you know, have accumulate your freckles with abandon. Um, but at the same time, I never do a procedure that gets rid of freckles because I don't believe in it. I think that you should embrace your freckles. You should love your freckles. Um, and I love freckles. You have to differentiate freckles from sunspots. So sunspots are things called lentigines or lentigos, and those are a sign of excessive sun exposure and sun damage. They can also be caused from blue light exposure and infrared heat. So blue light is coming from the phone that's staring at me right now. Blue light is coming from LED lights in my house. Blue light is coming from computer screens. It's coming from my iPad. Um, so we're doing a lot of screen time right now in the middle of this whole quarantine thing. So you've gotta be really careful about blue light exposure because it can lead to sunspots which is crazy because we never realized how big an effect blue light has on our skin and blue light comes from the sun too. So it's not just ultraviolet rays from the sun, it's also blue light. Um, so freckle prone skin, if you have freckles, that means you're at an increased risk for skin cancer. It means you're at an increased risk for melanoma. It means you have to use sunscreen, okay? So sunscreen, if you have freckles, 
is non-negotiable. Sunscreen if you have dark skin is non-negotiable. Sunscreen if you have brown skin, if you have black skin, if you have white skin, I don't care what color your skin, everyone should be wearing sunscreen. S skin cancer and melanoma in skin of color is more likely to be fatal, okay? It's more likely to cause death. It's more likely to be caught late. It's more likely to be aggressive and it's more likely to cause death. So nobody, no matter what your skin type, should go without sunscreen, guys. Oh, if you haven't checked it out, I have a new sunscreen ebook, it's free. Just go to my website, Dr. Whitney Bow, put in your email and you will get my free ebook for sunscreen, my top picks for 2020. And um, I also have my free ebook on the boot camp, which is how to just get glowing skin during quarantine. I hope some of you are venturing out a little bit and getting a little bit more brave, but doing it in a responsible way. Um, I'm nearing the 30 minute mark. I know I literally got to a fraction of the questions that you guys sent. Um, so I probably should be doing this a little bit more often, which is great to know, and I would love to do that. So if you guys have questions that I didn't get to, please feel free to put them below, um, and I will try to get to them, or we can uh, do another one of these next week, and I can get to them then. All right, guys, take care, be safe, and be good to everyone around you.